has to make a stand. What has transpired is a full-scale attack on the body of Christ and on the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church was never supposed to meet again. But I know that there's going to be another great spiritual awakening in America. And there's not a devil in hell that can stop it. You cannot stop the wave of the Holy Ghost. You cannot stop the church. And they shall rise up. They shall rise up. A prophet's sign that will rise up. We'll be standing for the word of God tonight. We stand for signs and wonders and miracles. We stand for Pentecost. Every tribe and tongue together as one. This is the hour of the church.
Welcome to night 1,399. Amen. Isn't that a great night? Very briefly, please take your seats as we do the announcements very quickly. As you're watching tonight, if you're watching online, we want to welcome every single one of you tonight, 1,399 of the stand. I thought it was 400. I was kind of excited about that, but it's 1,399. Tomorrow is 400, so don't miss out tomorrow. It's going to be a great night. But tonight, 1,399 is your night. And so if you're watching tonight by way of Facebook or YouTube, make sure you like and share the broadcast so that other people can be blessed as you are blessed tonight. And so right after you like and share the broadcast on Facebook and YouTube, go to RevivalTV.com so you don't miss any minute of the service tonight. If you want to watch the entirety of the service, you could go to RevivalTV.com and watch the entirety of it. And so if you're watching tonight on CTN, on Satellite, but which any other channel, go to RevivalTV.com and watch the entirety of the service. I want to encourage you to watch on RevivalTV.com. And if you're watching tonight, and you're believing the Lord for a miracle, there is a number at the bottom of the screen. It's 1-866-85-RIVER, 1-866-85-RIVER. And so as you're watching tonight, if you're believing the Lord for a miracle, if you need healing, if you need provision, you need deliverance from anxiety, depression, or any other thing, we have live operators that are answering the phones and believing God with you so you can see your miracle tonight. That number is 1-866-85-RIVER. And so don't miss out on what the Lord has for you tonight. Call the number right now and see how the Lord gives you your miracle tonight. I promise you there are thousands of people that have called in. They have a testimony now because they called 1-866-85-RIVER. And so before the call is over, the Lord can give you exactly what you've been believing him for. I want to encourage you, don't wait until the end of the service. Don't wait until Sunday morning. Call the number tonight and see how the Lord answers your prayer when you have someone come in agreement with you. Maybe it's not a miracle. Maybe you just need, you're believing the Lord for something. Call the number and have someone come in agreement with you so you can see your provision. You can see that miracle, that thing that you've been believing the Lord for. That number again is one 866 85 River. And that goes for people watching domestically or internationally. Go ahead and call that number tonight and see how the Lord answers your prayer. And so if tonight you're not following Pastor Rodney as of yet, make sure you go to Instagram, uh, type in on the search bar, type in at Rodney Howard Brown. That is at sign Rodney Howard Brown. And you'll see all the live updates from the Africa tour. As they're touring right now, Pastor himself is posting pictures, posting updates as they're uh, uh, going throughout the crusade, as they're going throughout this whole month in the, in the continent of Africa. He is posting himself. That is his account. There's no bots. There's no marketing team. It's Pastor Rodney himself. So go to Instagram right now if you're not following him yet. Um, and go to uh, search bar at sign Rodney Howard Brown. You'll see all the live updates, everything that's happening in the crusade, everything that's happening on, with the team. So make sure you stay up to date. Go to Instagram and follow Pastor Rodney as he does the Africa tour. And so if you are here tonight, if you're here tonight and you're not part of your university or you're watching by way of television, by way of satellite, you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, and the Lord has called you to the ministry Lucky for you or blessed for you, we have a place here that trains you up to do everything that the Lord has called you to do. That place is called River University. We have a university right here in Tampa, Florida. Yeah, woo, right? People say woo. And so we have River University. If the Lord's called you to shake nations, to go shake your city, to go shake your church, come get trained up, get all the tools that you need. Come to River University. Not only that, you, not only do you have to come, we have scholarships available for everybody. You can go to riveruniversity.org, riveruniversity.org. You'll be able to uh, register. You'll be able to turn your application, get your scholarship, and get ready to come down in August. Our next intake starts August 5th of 2024, so don't miss out. The Lord's called you to their ministry. He's also provided a place where you can get trained up to do everything that the Lord has called you to do. And so if you're not able to come here, we have something available for you as well. It's called uh, River School of the Bible. If you're not able to move to Tampa, Florida, we have River School of the Bible, which is an online school. You do everything at your own pace, and so you're able to apply that when you go to revival.com slash RSB, revival.com slash RSB. That is River School of the Bible. For if you can't move here to Tampa, Florida, you can't do the program here at River University, you can have River School of the Bible completely online. And so here at the church, we have Kingdom Business Fellowship. We have uh, uh, a team, a group of people that are here building up uh, businesses for the kingdom. 
We have uh, Pastor Rodney here edifying 300 multimillionaires for the end time harvest. And so we're doing everything that we can to get those people raised up, get those people taught on what they need to do so they could be a part of the Kingdom Business Fellowship. And we get together every first and third Tuesday of every month. So make sure you make, come to the next one. If you're not able to come, you're even available to go through Zoom. So you can attend through Zoom. If for... Um, if for some re- for, if the medical field, if the doctors have given up on you, if you have a disease, if you have an incurable disease, if something has happened to you that the doctors have declared incurable, for you, we have something that is called River School of Healing. We have the River School of Healing, and so we just finished our, our last session. We're about to finish it this Friday. Our next one starts April the 15th, April the 15th. So make sure you go to revival.com slash events and register for the next healing school. Like I said, if, you, if the doctors have diagnosed you with an incurable disease, if you're dealing with something in your body, if you're doing something on, with dealing with something on your mind, we have a two-week intensive program where you can come and receive everything from the Lord and learn how to receive your miracle from God. Not only how to get healed, Healed, but how to stay healed. And so like I like to say, if it's a weekday, we have healing school. So make sure you go to revival.com slash events and register for the next healing school session. Our next one starts April the 15th and it goes for two weeks. So if you're watching uh, from somewhere else other than Tampa, make sure you get your, pla- uh, your plane tickets, get your bus tickets, try to come down for the River Healing, uh, healing School, which starts April the 15th. We have also our 24-hour prayer chain. We're praying for the Africa Tour team 24 hours around the clock. And so if you want to sign up for that, we have a sign-up on revival.com slash prayer chain. Revival.com slash prayer chain as we're praying for the team. Maybe you're watching on the Eastern, Eastern time zone, mountain town zone, time zone, central time zone, uh, even Pacific time, or whichever way that you're watching. You could sign up for the uh, 24-hour prayer chain. So we're praying around the clock for the team, that the Lord bless them, protect them, that the Lord keeps them uh, with health, that the Lord opens doors for them, gives them uncommon favor, that the Lord gives them a blessing even over there, that the people receive everything from the Lord as Pastors Ronnie and and Adonica and the team are in the Africa tour. So make sure you go to revival.com slash prayer chain to sign up for our 24-hour prayer chain. April 15th is also the day of 12 hours of prayer, 12 hours of prayer. It's an amazing, amazing time here where we gather. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We gather here for 12 hours from noon until midnight. From noon until midnight, April 15th, we'll be gathering here at the church. We'll be praying for the Africa tour. We'll be praying for our nation. We'll be praying for your needs. And so if you're, people have been coming from out of town. People have been coming from other states. So make sure that you come down to the uh, 12 hours of prayer happening April 15th from noon until midnight. Be a part of that and see how the Lord answers your prayer when you come to the 12 hours of prayer uh, here at the church. Our next River Car Show is happening May 11th. Our next car show is May 11th. And so uh, if you want to register for that, you have an awesome car or you're believing the Lord for an awesome car, go to rivercarshow.com and register your car, even in faith, you know, go to register for rivercarshow.com. Or if you're just going to attend and you want to see cool cars, make sure they come here. We have, I mean, the most amazing display of vehicles. You never thought some vehicles could do what they do, the horsepower that they carry right here on the property. So make sure you go to rivercarshow.com so you can register for the next one happening May the 11th. And so Spring Ministers and Leaders Conference. Yes. Amen. It's coming up very, very soon. We called it the Shout. Amen. May 19th to the 26th. It's eight days full of the power of God, full of the fire of God, morning and night meetings, 9.30 a.m. and 7 p.m., and it's definitely a time you do not want to miss. Some people might be graduating. I don't know. I kind of heard about that. So it's going to be an amazing time. Make sure you come down for the Shout Conference. Come receive the touch of God. Come receive everything that you've been believing the Lord for. Take it back to the city, state, or country that you're from. And so, like I said, eight days full of the power of God, full of the touch of God. We can come and receive even vision. Come and receive the fire. Come and receive the touch from God. And so, May 19th, to the 26th, make sure you register on revival.com slash events. You'll see it there. The Spring Ministers and Leaders Conference called The Shout. And so after that, we will have the Summer School of Evangelism. Summer School of Evangelism is an amazing, amazing time during the summer where we spend our time showing people how to win souls, how to go uh, knocking on doors and winning souls, how to win souls one-on-one, how to win souls in mass crusades. And so we have a team here that has done it. They do it professionally. They do it well. They do it regularly. We give you all the tools so you could do that wherever that you are. So you could take it back to your church. You could take it back to your city. You could come get equipped and take the fire back with you. So Summer School of Evangelism will be happening. Happening June 3rd to July 6th, so it's five weeks 
And you could come and receive everything that we've learned. We come and share it with you. We don't withhold anything. We come and show you everything, how to win souls one-on-one, -on -one, knocking on doors, mass crusades, outreaches in the community. So you want to go to revival.com slash SSE, revival.com slash SSE for more information. And so you can apply for the school as well. And so uh, we want to invite you to that. And so before we head back into the service, I want to invite every single one of you that's watching by way of television. If you have a need, if you have a provision, you're believing the Lord for something, once again, call the number at the bottom of the screen, 1-866-85-RIVER, 1-866-85-RIVER. We have live operators who are answering the phones, believing God with you so you can see your miracle tonight. Don't wait until the end of the service. Don't wait until Sunday morning or the next conference. Call the number tonight and see how the Lord answers your prayer. Amen. So we're going to head back into the service. We're going to have the Shout Conference uh, promo before we do. And so uh, tonight is your night. Night 1,399 is your night. We're going to receive something powerful from God tonight. So as we roll the promo, call the number, register for whichever thing you need. And if you need anything, go to revival.com. You'll see everything there. Amen. God bless you. is coming another shout. The trump of God. The voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ will rise and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds.
to the land And all who've gone before us And all who will believe Will sing the song of ages to the land And your name is the highest Your name is the greatest Your name stands above
is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever, hear your people sing. Holy to the King of Kings. Holy, you will always be. Holy, holy forever. Yes, you will always be.
Hallelujah. 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 Come on, he's King of Kings, he's Lord of Lords. Come on. He's worthy to be praised tonight. Come on, his name is above every name tonight. Come on, his name is above every name. Somebody shout his name tonight. Jesus. Come on, lift up his name tonight in this place. Jesus. Come on, just start to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in your heavenly language. Build up yourself in your most holy faith tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brando saban darand in the morning. Shakamando sikimendi. Ale dando ramande de mesekere. E darama shakamandori. Brando sakamani. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You will do exactly what you promised tonight. Brando namando siki kamanda. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise tonight. We honor you, Lord. <laughs> praise your name. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a great praise tonight. Give him a shout of victory tonight. Give him a shout of victory tonight. Yes. How many believe tonight you're going to get your breakthrough? You've been pressing in. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, tonight's Thursday night. Tonight's your night. Come on, tonight's your night. Hallelujah. Have we not had a great week thus far? Come on, have we not had a great week thus far? Amen. Why don't you turn around, greet two or three people, and let them know that Jesus loves them, and then you may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, tonight is night 1,399 of the stand. Come on, I think we need to praise the Lord. 1,399. Give the Lord a praise just for that. Taking a stand against every plan of the enemy. And those of you that are tuning online, we encourage you, get on the telephone. The gospel is too big for you just to sit there by yourself. Get on the phone, tell two or three other people, and let him tune in tonight to watch us right here. It's Studio B, live from Tampa, on the east coast of Florida, from the River Church. Well, we've had a great week uh, this week, a real week of stirring up the fire of God in our spirits. And uh, I want to encourage you, tomorrow night we're still here. We're still here tomorrow night. And so you need to bring a friend. You might get blessed in the church. Just you might get blessed. Last night, two people got blessed. My God. But the rest of us also got blessed. Amen. Well, I promise that I brought a sewing kit and any kind of emergency outfit for anything that could go wrong tonight. I'm not so sure I've got the right color cotton, but... <laughs> But thank God for our guest speakers and family, Evangelist Ankut and Pastor Caleb. And he's brought a whole team with him. Come on, give God some praise and honor. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. We'll take the offering later. <laughs> Well, I'm so excited to report to you. Pastor Rodney has left the Botswana, Central Africa, southern region of Botswana, and they landed today in Madagascar. Now, if you know anything about Madagascar, I lived in southern Africa. Nobody goes to Madagascar. There's not even enough birds that are alive there. But God sent Pastor Rodney on a mission. And so we just want to play a few clips, just a few photographs. And uh, they also had a national interview on the news today. Uh, God has given us great favor. And we thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your giving. We thank you for supporting. So there it is. Wow. Look at Pastor Allen. <laughs> wow. 
I'm not so sure if this is Hawaii or Madagascar. Mm. Nanitsa kan sistan ni Madagaskara tam telo ra tola kanjo teo i Dr Rodney Howard Brown pitondra fivavana vahiny avy amin'ny Sharifa Ivory Ministries asy ro piara dia avy atsy Afrika Tsimo ny tenany fa monina ny Tampa Floride anatiny fandarapotoana ny amin'ny ity ni anatanterika ny fitsidiana firenena fito aty Afrika firenena faharoa no tsidiany taorian'ny Botswana i Madagaskara Fitsidiana miavaka satria akotry ny vavaka izay ataony dia isy ny fifampizarana iarany amin'ireo mpandraharaha sy mpitarika momba ny ahitarika sy ny fandraharahana mba ombo kokoa eo amin'ny asa sahanina toy izany ihany koa ireo olona izay tena mafy ny finoana mba ho tonga mandritra ny fitondrana Voalohany tonga izay mba hampahery ny firenena satria izay mino ny firenena rehetra dia tokony matanjaka. Izay dia mahatsapa hoe ny vahoaka dia afaka mitondra sy mitantana ny firenena, ny vahoaka tena ny any. Dia izay mba hoe izy no mifehy ny olony tsy misy olona avy any ivelany mandidy azy. Satria hitany ny fiatrikany izany manegatany. Marina fa isy ny fiara fitaterana anatitra ireo olona izay tonga aorian'ny fitoam-pivavahana lehibe mai mai mpona avokoa ny fivezivezena mandritra fitoana io ny masamy hafa ity panopina andriamanitra ity amin'ny ireo panopina andriamanitra hafa dia izy no miantoka ny lany rehetra amin'izay fivahinana nataony manerana an'izao tontolo izao ny fiara manidina ny manokana no etiny mivezivezy manatanteraka ny asana andriamanitra Nana mafy ny tena ny fafirenena manana ny maizy azy i Madagasikara ary misongadina amin'ny sehatra maro mbola betsaka ihany koa izy ny zavatra tsara sotrandrana mba hampandroso hatrany ny firenena lohalarana tsy azo dikaina amin'ny fanampiana sy ny fampivoarana ny firenena iray anefa ho izy ny vavaka ka tokony hampitombo ny aim-panahy ny rehetra ireo rehetra ireo dia misongadina nandritra ny tafany fanaovana tamin'ireo olona ni tsena sy tetia amin'ny seranam-piaramanidina iray sampirenena ivato Tazana tetia antoerana mo ny avy ony ny fiadidina ny republika sy ny solitena avy ony ny ministera ny serasera sy ny kolontsaina ary ireo mpitondra fiangonana maromaro asy ireo pino avy amin'ny ireo fiangonana ireo Amen <laughs> Well praise the Lord thank you for getting behind the vision of the house to take the gospel to all the world By the way, Evangelist Anchor will give you the interpretation of all that we were struggling. <laughs> well, how many of you excited about tonight? We thank God what he's done this past week, but we thank God what he's going to do tonight. And so without further ado, I'm going to encourage you to get on the telephone. People are already calling in. Uh, agree with our prayer counselors and uh, the prayer of faith will save the sick. Come on. And the Lord will raise everyone up. Whatever breakthrough you require, get on the telephone, tell somebody about this and let your friends know that there's a revival here in Tampa. Watch it online. Without ado, let's welcome Evangelist Anchored right now to the platform. Hallelujah. Thank you. Just give Jesus a mighty hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Lift both your hands high to Jesus tonight. Just open your mouth and just speak in tongues. Go ahead. Mahandiri stombra di libandiri bo vo sopra vaye. Mange la mantoro bo songre teriande le bara maye. Ide remandoro bo sobre vitike remanda. Ma mange le bondoro sto brevea, ma ambrondi le bara ma socro bendiri bandoro bo son breve. Minge le mondo robo so tombra vache, ma handi le boro sto brava ide le bra mandoro coro mandere che. E bori era basso ombrondi le bara mondo roba se brebebe. Oh, hallelujah. Ere ba soto bradi ala mahando robo so crebe. Mandiri bo sto brababa i yara mangolo brandere ba soto. Nem brandi li bandori era ba so brevete bara mundo loco. 
ma mangeri and alamoro sto breve ma minde le bongoro cobra va seteri andara mata ombrandi li bostombre va tambro bobo co ire mandara mosso che oh hallelujah 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father. In the mighty name of Jesus tonight, let not one person that stepped in this building go back the same way that they came. I pray that everyone that walked in here tonight will receive a touch from heaven. I thank you even as the word is preached. I pray may the word bear much fruit, may that fruit remain even unto eternity in the name of Jesus. May your word go with power. Anoint these lips of clay that they may speak the oracles of God. I think that every word that comes out of my mouth tonight, let it be heaven ordained in the name of Jesus. That there will be a deposit in their spirits tonight for the great things that you have in store for their lives. We give you the glory for all that you're about to do. I thank you, Lord, every, <laughs> every high thing exalting itself above the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ may be pulled down tonight. May they know the fullness of that which you have for them and their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Please be seated. Hallelujah. You can help me with uh, my mic, please, if you can increase the bass. I can barely hear myself tonight. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Tonight, on my way here, there are certain things that I was, I've been praying about, and a lot of times when I'm preaching about things like, like Dr. Rodney does, I'm actually preaching to myself. And sometimes when I'm preaching, I, I listen to myself preaching, I'm like, you should probably do that to yourself. And then I do it. Amen. But tonight... I feel like God's going to deposit something so supernatural on the inside of you. I'm talking about, I, I'm seeing certain things, but I'm going to ask the Lord to help me articulate that which I'm seeing for tonight. There are dreams that God has placed on the inside of you, every single one of you. And many of those dreams have not come to pass. But it's not because God's forgotten about that which he has promised you. It's just a time of the release of that which God has promised you had not come yet. But I want you to understand that time is here and that time is now. And I do not say that lightly. I do not say that lightly at all. I don't say that lightly. And in fact, there's this thing in my spirit, Teresa, <laughs> that's been brewing on the inside of me for a little while. And it's taken me a little time to grab a hold of it, although I've preached about it, but it's taken me some time to grab a hold of it. But I feel like in my spirit, I'm, 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 I'm reaching a place where I'm able to grab a hold of it. Because for me, I don't step into things unless I know by the Spirit of God that I need to step into those things. Okay? And I strongly believe here that there are people in the sound of my voice. The Lord is going to give you property. And, I'd, huh, listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
And, and, and there was a time in my life where I just thought, you know what, we got to get property because we need to own homes and we got to occupy and everything else. Yes, true, absolutely. But at the same time, there was a holy anger that was birthed on the inside of me to see the world and the heathens occupy what actually belongs to us. Property and land is a byproduct of the blessing of the Lord. When God blesses you, it is accompanied with property. Because when it's your land, you can do whatever you want. It is the mentality of ownership. Do you understand that? Right now, what the world is trying to do is they're trying to put upon you a mentality of you don't need to own anything and you'll be happy. But that's not the will of God for your life. The will, the, the will of God for your life is actually for you to have your own property and not just a property, but have many properties. And God is going to give you supernatural ability to use what the devil and his crowd have set up for themselves, but actually for yourself. And you will actually flip the whole situation around. And so tonight as I was, wa I was walking in here, the Lord spoke and this popped into my spirit. Tonight is a night of the blank check. If a billionaire handed you a blank check, would you put like a thousand dollars on it? So what happens when God gives you a blank check? You don't sit around and go, well, you know. I'm going to be very humble. I'm going to put like $1,000 on there. The night of the blank check. And in fact, in fact, it's going to be so crazy that you're going to have a difficult time trying to wrap your head around how it is happening. Because you won't have an explanation for how it's happening. Because if you could explain it, it wouldn't be God. And see, every time God does something, it has to have a great story. What people don't realize about God, God is a great writer. And he loves writing stories. The last chapter of your story was written by you. And that's why it sucked. The next chapter of your life, God's going to write. And when God writes that story, it will be an epic story. A story of epic proportions. And you know how, like a lot of times, you'll, see, you'll, you'll read a story and then, you know, you, you see the, the hero going through so many things and a rough time in his life and it's a whole thing and then he's at the lowest point and then suddenly the next moment, boom, the Lord shows up. You know, that's how it's going to be for you. The Lord's going to show up like that. It's going to be a sudden thing. So, I'm saying all that to get to a point tonight. The devil's stolen many things from you. He's tried to play an underhanded game with you. But I want you to understand tonight, you will recover all. You are going to recover everything. Everything, every single thing. There's not going to be one thing that you will not recover. Like David pursued the Amalekites, you will pursue and you will win 
and you will grab a hold of everything they stole and you will bring it back. And not one thing will be held by your enemies. And not only that, you will take what belongs to them as well. So the devil's going to pay up with interest. I've been watching all these heathens going out there buying property and whatever. And I'm like, absolutely not. It's actually not theirs. It's actually mine. I'm telling you. The Lord gave me a whole game plan for the next two years. I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> yeah. But I'm excited about what God's going to do. So what I'm sharing with you is what actually what God's actually doing in my spirit. If you grab a hold of it, and sometimes the Lord allows certain things to happen, so a righteous anger starts burning on the inside of you for that situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so excited tonight. I cannot even tell you how excited I am. If I could articulate <laughs> what I'm feeling right now. Hallelujah. Psalm 37. One of my favorite scriptures when it comes to property. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will safely, then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, then he will give you your heart's desire. Say with me, take delight. Take delight. A lot of people don't take delight in the Lord. All they're really worried about is themselves. And that's why they're never able to step in the level where they, like I was talking about last night, you, you go from being or, or expecting a manifestation to becoming a manifestor. But most people stay at level one, le level one they, don't, they never get to level two. Continue with me. Verse 5. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Verse 7. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Say with me, patiently. patiently. One of the things that a lot of believers lack is patience. They always try to run ahead of God. I never try to run ahead of God. If God doesn't want me to have something, then I don't want it. That's the whole reason why a lot of people get into debt. is because they want something that God doesn't want them to have. But I've always believed that God, when he asks you to do something, the provision will go along with it. Amen. Don't worry about evil people who prosper. Or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry and turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed. But those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Soon the wicked will disappear. Though you look for them, they will be gone. The lowly will possess the land. The what? No. Will possess the what? Yeah. The wicked plot against the godly. They snarl them in defiance, but the Lord just laughs. For he sees their day of judgment coming. The wicked draw their swords and string their bows to kill the poor and the oppressed, to slaughter those who do right. But their swords will stab their own hearts, and their bows will be broken. Verse 22. Those the Lord blesses will possess the land. Verse 29. The godly will possess the land. 
Verse 34, put your hope in the Lord, travel steadily along his path. He will honor you by giving you the land. I'm sensing a theme here for tonight. <laughs> it's time for you to enter and possess the land. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just sitting there and saying amen is not going to help you. This isn't for everybody, by the way. This is only for those who actually believe. And those are going to act on the word. You're about to possess the land. And not some metaphorical land. You're going to possess real land. Homes, properties, things that you did not build. There's a heathen out there right now building your house for you. And he doesn't even know it. He's working hard, spending all his money. And then suddenly, it's in your hands. Well, where does it say that in the Bible? Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 26. God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy to those who please him. But if a sinner becomes wealthy, <laughs> God takes the wealth away and gives it to those who please him. It's not like a request. He takes it away. Okay, all right. Discouragement corner over there, encouragement corner over here. All right. God will take it from them. Like, he's going to... Let me explain take. Take is not... Can you please give it to me? Take is... That's how it's going to be. He's going to take it from the wicked. He's going to hand it over to you. Hallelujah. All right, continue with me. Reading uh, 2 Samuel. Chapter 7. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all the surrounding enemies. See, one of the most important things that you have to understand, when God blesses somebody, he gives you rest. And one of the things that I, the theme that I've been on this year is the year of rest. I'm not trying to make anything happen. I've had the most chill year I've ever had in my life. Like last year, if I compare myself to last year, I looked like a raving lunatic. <laughs> now I'm just so calm. Like everybody that's around me, they're like, wow, you're so calm about everything this, this year. I'm like, because I don't even care anymore. I just know God has... God has control over everything, and I'm just chilling out, and I'm just waiting on the Lord. The Lord will do it. If he promised me he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And if I help him, I'm going to screw it up. So the key is keep doing what's in front of you, and then he will open up everything else for you. Stop being worried about running ahead of God's time. Just chill out. Look at the person next to you and say, chill out. Look at the person on the other side and say, chill out. <laughs> Tap the shoulder person in front of you and say, chill out. <laughs> it is vital for you to chill out. Amen. The king summoned Nathan the prophet. Look, David said, I'm living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of God is out there in a tent. Now, David was sitting in his beautiful palace. And he looks out the window and he sees God's house is a tent. Now, if you read, the, read what I re read just a few minutes ago, God gives those people who delight in him. 
So what was David doing? He was delighting in the Lord. Because he was thinking about the Lord more than he was thinking about himself. He didn't care for the cedar palace he had. He was looking outside the window, and he saw God, God's house was a tent. And this is what he says. I'm living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of God is out there in a tent. Verse 3. Now, this is the key. Nathan replied to the king, go ahead and do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. Amen. Now, here's the interesting part. The step one is, is expecting a manifestation. Step two is being the manifestor to somebody else. Okay? Step three, when you start to delight in the Lord, the Lord says this is step three. Very simple. The Lord tells you, go do whatever you have in mind. Amen. Why though? Because what David's heart was delighting in the Lord, and he made his kingdom his first priority. And when God saw that David's heart was in the right place, and he was thinking about the house of the Lord, God said, do whatever you, you have in mind. Okay, you didn't get that. It's fine. <laughs> the blank check. The blank check is given to anybody who puts the kingdom of God first. Okay. Do you know how? I know I have a blank. I told you last night. I think about things and they happen. I don't even pray about things anymore. Because my mind is set on building the kingdom of God. Everything else that I need just gets added to me. So when you put the kingdom of God first, you have a blank check. And whatever you want is available to you just like that. Because God knows where your heart is at. Okay, now I'm going to explain something very important to you. Now think about this for a minute. I'm, going to, I'm not going to take much time tonight, but I've got to explain this to you. Now imagine I have the ability to jump 20 feet. I don't. I'm not going to jump 20 feet right now. That's not what I'm saying. I said imagine. Imagine. Okay? All right. So imagine I have the ability to jump 20 feet. From, put your hand up. Put your right hand up. Okay. That's him all the way. Put your hand up. Uh, you. We put your hand up. We'll go further. All right. Imagine that's about 20 feet. I'm not sure if it's 20 feet. I'm just saying imagine. Now when, I, when you see me jump 20 feet, if somebody comes and challenges me and say, Let's see if you can jump five feet. I'm trying to get to something right now. What would, you, what would you say if you were in my place? Duh, I'd jump 20 feet. Why wouldn't I be able to jump five feet? Put your hands down. Do you follow me so far? Now, if you understand, it's going to change your life. Now, five feet for a guy who jumped 20 feet is not a big deal. And this message doesn't apply to a lot of churches out there, but this applies to the River Church. Okay? Now listen to this. How many of you here have won souls? That's the River Church for you. How many of you have laid hands on the sick and you've seen them recover? Okay, this is the River Church. Which is a harder thing to see people saved and healed or to bring in finances. <laughs> so you've seen people get healed. You've seen people get saved through your life. Do you think it's a big deal for God? So you've already done the 20 foot jump. Okay, you didn't get it. If you get this, this changes your mentality. You've done the 20-foot jump. 
The five foot jump isn't a big deal. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think you got it tonight, but. The jump you're looking at is only a five foot jump. You've already done the 20 foot jump. So what you're asking God for, for to occupy is not a big deal. You've already done the harder things. The power to create wealth is like a menial thing. It's like a, it's like a lowly thing. And so people ask me, how can you believe God for finances the way you do? And you've seen things happen in four years. You know why? Because I've already seen people get saved. I've already seen miracles and signs and wonders. Money is nothing. You understand that money is nothing. So people put money on a pedestal and say, well, that is what we've got to acquire. But you have to realize that's the dumb thing. You already have the important things. So I'm not sitting there like, this is how I fight my battle. God, I need a breakthrough. You've already done the difficult thing. You've been doing the difficult thing. But now you're going to step into a flow of rest. Because you're going to understand that you don't have to struggle for it. You don't have to worry about it. You already have the power to create wealth. Are you listening to me? If God can trust you with his power for miracles and salvation, do you not think he's going to give you the power to create wealth? What you've asked the Lord for is an easy thing. It's not a difficult thing. You look at anything. You talk about a plane. You talk about properties. You talk about everything. Those are all stupid things. When you start seeing them that way, it changes the way you do things. Well, that's always a good sign. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 9. We'll read verse 6. Here's my point. A stingy sower will reap a meager harvest, but the one who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you. He's more than what? He's more than ready. He's not just ready. He is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything in every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Just as the scriptures say about the one who trusts in him because he is sown extravagantly and given to the poor, his kindness and generous deeds will never be forgotten. This generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant towards you. First he supplies every need plus more. Then he multiplies a seed as you sow it. So that the harvest of your generosity will grow. You will be abundantly enriched in every way as you give generously on every occasion. 
For when you take your gifts to those in need, it causes many to give thanks to God. Amen. Now, I want, to, I want you to see a few things here before I receive tonight's, tonight's offering. Number one, he multiplies the seed. When? As you sow it. Okay? That means at the, at the point of your action is where your miracle is released. So the harvest of your generosity will grow. And then it says, in every way, as you give generously on every occasion. So God watches what you do with your money. That's the thing that people don't understand. When you're giving, God is watching where your heart is at. The problem is not giving you the money. That's the easy thing. The problem is the heart. If your heart is set on the things of the kingdom of God, and God watches your giving continually and sees where your money is going and where your heart is at, then God will freely give you everything else. But if your heart is only set on yourself, that's why people that are, people that are stingy actually only think about themselves. When you only think about yourself and not the kingdom of God, then God can't trust you with it. Because when you think about yourself, it's pride. When you think about others, it's humility. When you put somebody else before you put yourself forward, then what, what happens? God sees you're a, you have a humble heart. And God says, I can trust you with more. Because I know when I give you something, it's not going to ruin you. I'm so grateful to God that what he's giving me now, he didn't give it to me four years ago. I'd have ruined myself. But now I know what to do with it. Tomorrow, if God gave me $5 million, I know exactly what I would do with it. So it's all about keeping your heart in the right place. And tomorrow night, I'm going to put the cherry on top with this message. I haven't even told you everything. Today I left you with another key. Every night I've been leaving a key. If you grab the hold of it by the end of this week, you will live the most rested life. And you will not stress about another thing for the rest of your life. Zero stress. All you got to do is keep sowing seed and then keep expecting a harvest. That's it. That's all you got to do. You got to do your job and God will do his job. He's the Lord of the harvest. Tonight, let giving flow from your heart, not from your head, from your heart. Because what's happening with the river of Tampa Bay Church and RMI is like unprecedented. I've never seen anything like that in my life. With Dr. Rodney going to eight different countries in a matter of four weeks, Taking the gospel not just to the people, but the governmental realms. You know that's unheard of? That nobody else has ever really done that before? Do you realize this church wins more souls than most, let's say you take 100, 100 evangelistic ministers, you put them all together. RMI still wins more souls. So this is the most fertile ground you could ever sow into. Amen. And tonight, let me tell you this. Tonight, like I said, God's given you a blank check. He's given you a blank check. But tonight I want you to sow according to what you're expecting from the Lord. Everything you're believing God for. So according to that. You have a big dream, a big seed. A small dream, a small seed. Do whatever the Lord tells you to do. Just obey his voice tonight. There are many of you that have been, that have been actually holding yourself back from the fullness of God's purpose in your life. Because the heart has been in the wrong place. Get the heart in the right place. And everything will be released. So tonight I just wanted to deal with the heart. 
Tomorrow I'll deal with something else, but tonight I've got to deal with this. So let the Lord speak to you what you need to do. If you have two numbers in your heart, it's always a bigger, bigger number. And if two numbers bother you, you put them together and you give it all away. There are people, the past couple of nights, the Lord has been speaking to you over and over again to release something significant. See, why is the Lord speaking to you to do that? For a very simple reason. Because he wants to test your heart to see what you would do if he asked you for something. If he can trust you with a little, he will give you the greater. If he can't trust you with a little, he can't give you the greater. Because he knows if he gives it to you, he'll ruin you. That's why giving is not just about throwing money in. Giving really comes from your heart. See, when you give, put your hand out, Elizabeth. When you give, God doesn't look at what you're giving. He looks at the heart. He moves your hand away. He's like, nope. What's in your heart? What is the intention behind your giving? To further the kingdom of God or to further yourself? So once you get the priorities right, when you delight in the Lord, then he will give you the desires of your heart. So in your giving, you actually show whether you delight in the Lord or you don't delight in the Lord. I know it's very, getting very quiet in here, but... It's good. I've had times when I've given with reckless abandonment. In the natural realm, I probably look like a nutcase. But it worked. Today, God's giving me things that I've never even dreamed of. My generations would have never dreamed of this. God can do it to a skinny brown Indian. He can do it to anybody. Starting every eye be closed across this place, every head be bowed. Tomorrow night I'm going to do the final part of this week's series. I'm going to leave you with the biggest key tomorrow night that I've learned in the ministry. And if you understand that key, it'll change your life. But tonight, obey the voice of the Lord. Do whatever He tells you to do. And follow the Holy Ghost. Follow the Holy Ghost. There are people watching us around the world tonight. The Lord's spoken to you so many times to release something significant towards this ministry. And there are some people that are watching me that you know that you don't have much time on this earth. The Lord spoke to you to do something for this ministry. Do not ignore the voice of the Lord. It doesn't matter if your whole life you didn't really know about the things of God and you never did anything for the kingdom of God. But at least... Now, step out and do something for the kingdom. So when you do get to heaven, I promise you, you're going to have a reward. And it'll be a perpetual harvest. And you'll keep reaping a harvest in heaven as people continue to get saved across America and the world. And there are people that are watching us right now. There's sorrow attached to your money. There's great sorrow attached to your money. But as you give, God's going to take that sorrow out of the way. There are people in the room, people watching us right now. The Lord spoke and used over and over again to release a significant seed. Some the Lord spoke and used 1,000, others 10,000, 15, 25, 30, even 100,000. There are people that can even release a million dollar seed. Tonight is the night to go above and beyond and do what the Lord told you to do. Hallelujah. The ushers will come and hand the envelopes over to you. Go and ushers pass the envelopes down the rows. There are many ways to give tonight. On Facebook and YouTube, our, our moderators are posting the ways you can give. You can give via push pay as well. 
You can text give RMI, one word, give RMI to 77977. You can even give via PayPal, revival.com slash PayPal. Cash app is dollar sign revival ministries. You can also go to revival.com slash giving. You can even do it the old snail mail way. P.O. Box. Revival Minute Ministry International, P.O. Box 292-888, Tampa, Florida, 33687. Revival Ministry International, P.O. Box 292-888, Tampa, Florida, 33687. You can also give by calling the number on the screen, 1-866-85-RIVER. There's somebody that's watching as the Lord spoke to you to release a significant seed. Call the number and tell us what the Lord spoke to you to do and do it today. Don't say you're going to wait another day or another hour or do it now. God didn't ask somebody else to do it. God asked you to do it. So don't pass the buck to somebody else. You do it. Once you're ready with your offering, Lift it up with your right hand. If you used your phone, pick your phone up. If you used your, an envelope, pick the envelope up. Whatever you used to give tonight, just pick your hands up with your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight I ask you to multiply every seed sowed. I thank you as they give what is precious to them. That you will watch their heart that is attached to their giving. And you will open up to them the easy thing, which is the power to create wealth. And, and may there be no lack found among them all the days of their lives. May they overflow mentally, physically, emotionally, in love, in joy, in peace, in prosperity. No lack, no lack in the name of Jesus. Everything that they need, put it into their hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And finally, I just want to say this. Tomorrow night is going to be an epic night. You don't want to miss tomorrow night either. We're going to have a mega miracle service right here tomorrow night. Amen. So, it's going to be awesome. Over to, to a great man of God, Pastor Caleb Ring, after this song.
shout of praise. Come on, let your shout be the loudest shout. Come on, magnify the King. Magnify the King. Lord, we give you, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Father, I thank you for a room full of hungry people. I thank you for hungry people all across the nations of the world tuning in right now from every tribe and every tongue that watches this broadcast, whether it be live or whether it be later. I pray the same anointing and the same presence that we've saturates this place tonight will come upon them. Lord, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. If you're hungry out there, just stir that up right now. He says, if you're hungry and thirsty, you will be filled. Lord, I thank you that your presence is with me. Minister to your people tonight. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit destroy every yoke of bondage. Every yoke of bondage. Every depressing thought. Every anxiety. Every past hurt every scar upon a heart, every addiction, every fear, everything that has come against your people. I pray the anointing of the Holy Spirit would break those yokes tonight. I declare tonight is a night of freedom. Tonight is a night of overflow. Tonight is a night of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. May our cups overflow. Ha. And may you have your perfect way in this place tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you love Jesus, give him a great big shout of praise. He is wonderful. He is glorious. He is magnificent. Look at your neighbor. Say, tonight is my night. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, worship team. I've asked the Lord a couple of things tonight. There's a few things the Lord has shown me that I... I hope we can get to tonight. Sometimes the Lord shows you a blueprint, but it really depends on the people in the crowd if they respond to the unctions of the Holy Spirit or not. And so I believe the Lord's got a great night planned for everybody. Amen. Who, who actually believes that the Lord has something planned for you tonight? Amen. I do. I want to take a moment before we get started and just say I, I want to publicly just honor Dr. Rodney and Adonica Howard Brown absolute generals in the body of Christ. Their sacrifice has just gone on unnoticed by heaven, as you can see. And so I honor them. I honor the team here in Tampa, Florida. Every one of you that serves here in day in and day out are a part of what the Lord is doing in the nations of the world. And I just honor this place. 1,399 nights. Give yourself a hand clap. That's supernatural. I mean, Point to what ministry can you point to that says, hey, we're on night almost 1,400 here. You know what I'm saying? Like most places, he'll have like a two-day conference. <laughs> it's like 1,400 days. <laughs> I remember preaching at night 1,000 thinking, will there be another 1,000? Now I'm questioning, will there be 10,000? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd be like, be like 93 years old, night numbered. 267,000. I don't, don't quote me on the math. That's probably way off. You know, people are like, you'd be 1 million years old or whatever. I don't know. I can't do math publicly. I can do it well with a calculator in a private room somewhere. I'm going to have time to think about these things. Amen. Somebody do that real quick. Okay, I'm 41. If I'm 91, that's 50 years from now, what night would it be at the stand if I'm 91 years old? Someone quickly, come on, get a calculator. Do this. What? I was like, you're really bad with math. <laughs> I mean, I'm not good with math, but I know I'm not that bad with math. <laughs> what is it? 19,650. Welcome. Tonight, 19,650. Amen. Who's going to be there for night 1,000 or night? I can't even remember. Anyways. All right, I want to read a couple scriptures. Man, I honor. And then before we go further also, I want to take a moment and honor the Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. Come on. Give him honor. Give him praise. Make way for the Holy Spirit in this place right now. 
We honor you. We exalt you. We are not ashamed of what you do in us and you do through us. We're not ashamed of the gift of speaking in tongues. We're not ashamed of the gifts of the Spirit. We're not ashamed of the anointing or the unction of the Holy Ghost. We're not ashamed of your ways. We're not ashamed of your ways. We honor you. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. You are the Spirit of the living God. May you quicken every living body in this place. May we leave more alive than we came in Jesus' name. If that's your prayer, give the Lord another rip-roaring shout of praise. I feel fire in this place tonight. It's going to be an explosive night. Ephesians 5, 17 and 19 says, Do not be unwise. Who in here wants to be wise? Who in here wants to be a fool? So in other words, don't be a fool. Don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Shout the will of the Lord. Lord. Who wants to do the will of the Lord in here? And I want to be pleasing to you, Lord. I want to do what you want me to do. Your will be done. Who's ever prayed like Jesus? Man, that's a hard thing you ask God, but nevertheless, your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. Don't be a fool. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't be drunk with wine, which is in dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we actually miss the simplicity of this right now. It is actually commanding you to be filled with the Holy Spirit to the point where you're singing to yourselves. Come on, somebody. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, slurring as you go. So you have a command from God to be filled with the Spirit. And the Bible says that blessed are those which are hungry and thirsty, for they will be filled. So in other words, you have a command from God to be hungry and thirsty. So I want you to take about... 20 seconds, and I want you to stir up that hunger on the inside of you tonight, and I want you to get filled with the Spirit right now, singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Come on, let every cup overflow. I command you to be filled. I command your cups to overflow. I command the oil of the Holy Ghost to come upon every head in this place right now. You will be oily tonight. You will be joyful tonight. There will be new wine that bubbles up on the inside of you. You're going to laugh your way into breakthrough tonight. You came in stressed. You came in worried. But you're going to laugh yourself right into the greatest miracle you've ever walked in before. Tonight is your night. Be ye being filled right now. Come on, keep going. Keep going. Oh, I don't see, I don't hear those spiritual songs. I want the new wine, that heavenly kind, coming down from the Father of lights. It makes me laugh, it makes me sing, it makes me dance all night. It's that Holy Ghost and fire. The one that was prophesied. I love you, Lord, but give me some more of that new, new wine. I can't sing, but I certainly can drink. I want some new wine, that heavenly kind. Come on. Have a drink. If you're watching right now, have a drink. The new wine of the Spirit is easy. It's free. There's no bar tab. You don't have to pay the bill. You don't wake up tomorrow with a snackletooth woman named Beatrix. You wake up anointed, 
refreshed. Don't be a fool. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Be filled with the Spirit till you're singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. Some of you are looking at me. Without this in feeling, your life is empty. You're like a shriveled up balloon that's never been filled. It's powerless, but the power comes from the Spirit of the Lord, not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. Oh, we thank you for it right now. As you stir yourself up, keep stirring, keep stirring, keep drinking, keep drinking. Let your cups bubble up. Some of you need to drink extra tonight because your neighbor doesn't know how to get drunk. So you got to bubble up so much that it splashes onto them. If you can't drink here, you can't drink anywhere. It's the new wine. That heavenly kind comes down from the Father of lights. It makes me laugh. <laughs> it makes me sing. It makes me dance all night. It's that Holy Ghost and fire. I feel breakthrough. Pick up the phone right now, call in, especially if you're depressed, especially if you currently have to turn to drugs or alcohol in order to seek relief. Say, I'm tired of trusting Bush Light. I want to trust the Holy Ghost and fire. Pick up the phone, dial the number on the screen. Someone will pray for you, and I mean that. Joel says, weep and howl, you drinkers of the old wine, for because of it the new wine has been cut off from your lips. I think you've the new wine of the Spirit in this place. Jesus. <laughs> Matthew 21, 22. You can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it. I'll read that again. Matthew 21, 22 says, you can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it. Shout, receive it. So tonight, Lord, I ask you, I pray, may tonight be a very special night. May every lesson that I have learned through the years of following your voice, may every hardship that I've had to walk through to break more foolishness off of me, everything that I've battled and encountered, to let the anointing of the Holy Spirit flow through my life, I pray that tonight, as I lay hands on your people, that they would not have to go through what I went through, that you would save them the years of idiocracy that I had to walk through. You said that I could ask anything in prayer, and if I believe it, I can receive it. So tonight I'm asking for a breakthrough for everybody in this place, and I receive it right now by faith. Amen. I'd like to ask my beautiful wife to come forward. <laughs> before she... Before she grabs the microphone and takes off, she might jump over six rows. I actually want to just take a moment and say this concerning her. You know, in my life, I have not really, you know, I've seen many great miracles. But I've actually held this woman's hand, uh, feet in my hands when the, her ankle was shattered and broken. Right outside here. Her foot was like mush. I could feel the bones, felt like oatmeal. And she looked up to heaven that night, and she grabbed a hold of the things of God by her faith, and I felt that bone grow back underneath my thumb. This woman has prayed for more miracle babies than I have ever known anybody pray for. She is a giant of faith. So, babe, rip, roar, and turn it loose. I think they're drunk enough for you. She's also a much better singer than I am. <laughs> training. <laughs> training? Training. I'm training? No. I went, 
I had a teacher. Oh, training. Oh, you had training. Yes, I had training. So you're saying that in five to six years with proper training, I could sing like you. It's possible. <laughs> I believe. It. I believe. I believe. <laughs> Molly Kelly might not believe, but I, I believe. believe. <laughs> Who believes one day I'll be able to sing? Wow. There's only about a tenth of the crowd, babe. We did. I don't think the faith is strong here tonight. Pray for the gift of faith on the people. Amen. <laughs> Get drunker. Come on, right now. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Um... Great. <laughs> every, every time I come to Tampa, I, I always look out at the Bible school students. How many of you are in Bible school? And I always want to be able to encourage you and say that God can use you. In your uniqueness, your voice, your DNA, you don't have to pattern yourself after Jonathan Shuttlesworth, bless him, <laughs> or Ankit Rambabu, bless him, who is my adopted Indian brother. You don't need to be a poor man's copy of anybody else. That's so good. Amen. Amen. Now, unfortunately for me, or fortunately, whichever way you want to think of it, I happen to have DNA that is in my 23 chromosomes, 23 chromosomes from Rodney and Adonica Hard Brown. So, you know, this I can't escape. Sometimes when I speak, they're like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I saw your mom right there. Oh, I saw your dad right there. Or if they know me better, they'll watch my dad and be like, oh my gosh, your dad just made a face like what you make. And I'm like, well, where did you think it came from? Mm. <laughs> just gonna say, I, it's, it, yeah, I can't run away from it. You know, I learned a long time ago, just embrace it. With everything that you have, just love it. Come on. If, if I can walk into a room and ferret something out by the Holy Spirit and like scratch in somebody's kitty litter, I do it. <laughs> I've tried not to. I've desperately tried to change and it has not worked. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time we were, we were in like the early days of traveling ministry and we went to meet this pastor in his office. And um, I embarrassed my husband so much. I mean, now I don't think he would care. But um, I literally walked to the one book on this guy's shelf that was written by one of my dad's biggest critics. And I said, excuse me, what is this? I was like, you know this book is all about my father? Do you know this book is utter garbage? Do you know that this guy never even walked into one of my father's services and that he doesn't know what he's talking about? <laughs> and you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, what are you doing? Shut up. Why are you even telling him who your dad is? <laughs> Was this in St. Louis? I think so. I don't know. Like, when we were talking about possibly booking meetings and my husband was like, we never got invited. To we Christmas. never got in. We never got the invite. And I'm like, I was like, babe, I saw, babe. I saw a friend of ours was just at that church, though. <laughs> I said, I said, babe, better he find out now before he books the meetings with us instead of being horribly shocked when he comes to find out whose progeny and offspring I am because it's gonna be exposed, it's gonna be revealed, and it can't be contained. I'm, I'm every bit as wild and crazy as both Dr. Rodney and Dr. Donica. I can test. I can't help it. You know, in the early days of marriage, he'd be like, 
you're just like your father. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> can I, sorry, can, I don't know where the backstage guy, can I get a little bit of my mic in the monitor? I don't want to like explode your eardrums and get a little loud, you know. Um, I hate that when preachers yell. I'm like, you do understand what a microphone does, don't you? <laughs> you do understand that they spent a lot of money on these amplification devices. <laughs> you don't have to scream. You can get a little loud, but don't, you know, yell. My husband loves it when I give him <laughs> that lecture, <laughs> or I'm on the front row holding my ears. A but 80 people could be under the power, and my wife says, you're too loud. <laughs> Bring it I, down 10 decibels. I have sensitive ears. Um, what are you doing, babe? You gonna read the word? No, actually, um, okay, so funnily <laughs> enough, the, uh, no, you're gonna do that in a minute. So funnily enough, during 2020, <laughs> there was a Rolling Stone article written about my husband. But we, a Rolling Stone. <laughs> of course it wasn't like, you know, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes! <laughs> but we found it like a whole year later, right? Yeah, we couldn't capitalize on it. Like we couldn't, yeah. We, I mean, like, we missed opportunities because we're just not staying current. So uh, today, Jessica, the head of our pregnancy center, wave your hand, Jessica, <laughs> whew, that we inherited this pregnancy center. And I will never say, I usually will never say the word proud, but I am proud that me and Pastor Caleb, even though we've had to administrate it and everything, have never taken one red cent from the pregnancy center. We left that ministry alone and um, to grow, and we prayed over it. So there's this whole article written, and um, if you want the article, we, me and my dad tweeted about it today, but it was written in August, and um, it goes through like all these ministries, like all of these Clearly, liberal people are getting mad because the state actually gives funding to pregnancy centers just as it gives funding to Planned Parenthood. Correct. It's equal opportunity. So, amen, you know, you know. But they're trying to, these liberal demons are trying to write this article to take money that is being dispersed, and we still have to raise funds outside of that, um, away from pregnancy centers. That are Christian-oriented. That are Christian. That right. are leading people to the Lord, which ours right. is. They're getting saved. They're getting parenting classes. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but one of the things, I mean, there was so many, so much stuff in it, like talking about what Pastor Caleb did it's in 2020, how we encourage people to hug people <laughs> and, like, bring that up again, you know. And, like, then it says, um, one of the parts said, helping Howard Brown grow his Christian empire in Florida <laughs> is the evangelist's daughter and son-in-law, Kirsten and Caleb Ring, who started a Howard Brown-branded river church of their own in Claremont. And I was like, Dad, we're helping you grow your Florida empire. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I, I take it as a compliment, you know. You got to take it as a compliment. It's actually amazing. Your critics actually pay more attention to your message than the people in there sometimes. <laughs> I've actually been blessed by the critics because I'm like, they really got a lot out of the message. <laughs> They're quoting him in yeah, his they, sermons? Yeah, they quote you and you're like, that's anointed. That <laughs> Then, you, then your team will put like some stupid quote of you like, Pastor Caleb said, tie your shoes in the morning. And you're like, what? That's what you got out of the message? <laughs> so it, go, it goes on to say, I guess they look at your tweets. And I was like, oh, well, I don't tweet nearly enough. But um, it, it was talking about my dad, too. And one of the, um, there's a River School of Government student with her picture in this article. And um, she's, I forget her name right now, but I, I could look it up. Amber. Amber. Yeah. And so, River School of Government in the house. Woohoo! 
And they said, and a River Bible Institute and River School of Government graduate. You know, it was awesome. I'm like, look at our pictures in this. This is awesome. So then it goes on to say, uh, Howard Brown's daughter is almost as crazy as he is. And that's what hurts your feelings. You no, know, I'm not hurt. I mean, I was like, well, you know, I would be exactly as crazy as he is if I tweeted more, but I just don't, so. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> so it was pretty funny, but like the Lord is going to use you exactly as you are, Come except on. he's not going to leave you in your dirt. He's not going to leave you in your filth. Come on. He's not going to leave you in your depression. He's not going to leave you in your sickness. Come on. He's going to make you whole from head to toe. And then you are going to say, here's my cup, Lord, fill it up. And you are going to overflow living water to a lost and a dying world. Amen. You are, if you're in Bible school, you are already, you are already on mission. I know how this Bible school operates. You are already on mission. You are already winning souls. You are already doing more ministers than ministries that hold a pulpit. You already have more souls in your soul count than some ministries that have a pulpit and a microphone. That's right. Amen. Amen. On Tuesday night, I was saying to the uh, ladies, and I didn't tell this last night, but Pastor Caleb just like picked right up on it, and it was his whole message. And if you didn't hear last night, I encourage you to go listen to it again. It was phenomenal. And um, I had said to the people, I said, I love behind the scenes ministry. I said, put me behind the camera, put me in the nursery, put me anywhere. I love it. I love to serve in that capacity. Amen. Put me in the coffee bar. Let me serve in hospitality. Let me serve in food ministry. I've loved it. And growing up in this ministry, I did all of those things. I've loved it. And if the Lord had not spoken to me in an audible voice to go into ministry, I would still be in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, serving the church there, and I would be a labor and delivery nurse because that was my plan. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord said, I was worshiping God by myself, and I do that all the time, and I, I had um, Kim Walker Smith's Still Believe album on, and it had just come out, and God put me out in the shower, <laughs> And he said, you will go. And I said, no, Lord. <laughs> I know what that means. <laughs> I know what that sacrifice means. And I know the criticism that comes with it. And I don't want it. I just want to catch the beautiful little babies. And that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I'll serve you in your church. And I will serve this pastor. Even though they're not like my parents, I will serve them. I know what that is. I know what that is to just serve. And I know what crowns are waiting for me in heaven if I just serve. I don't need a, I don't need a microphone. And he said, no, you will go. And I, and I thought of all the thousands of Bible school students that, that all they hunger for is a platform and a microphone and a ministry and a name. And I was like, look at them, Lord. Look at them. Pick them. Choose them. Bypass me. Bypass me. Just, just take this cup and give it to another. And he said, no, you will go because it is not about you. It is about everything that has been placed on the inside of you your whole life. That it's about the training and I'm not going to waste the training. Mm. It's about that word that was put on the inside of you. It's about the ability to flow with the Holy Spirit. It's about the ability to be filled up to overflowing so that it goes into somebody, so it changes their lives, so it changes their heart, so it changes their mind, so it changes their physical body. It is not about me. I could care less how I look. I could care less. It had, and I was like, God, that's the weirdest call ever. <laughs> no, I want you. But it's not really about you. It's about all your training. 
It's about what I put on the inside of you. It's about years being built up. It's about getting a touch from God from the age of almost seven years old and laughing for um, what my parents think is three and a half hours, but they don't know because they put me to bed and I was still laughing. This is not physically possible for a seven-year-old. I was one month from seven. It's about revival meeting after revival meeting after revival meeting when you thought you were just getting the joy, when you thought you were just getting some tears, when you thought you were just feeling the presence, when you thought you were having a good time, when you thought you were running around the building. When you were being filled with the word of God on repeat over and over and over and over again. You think there's something not happening to you when you've come to 564 nights of the stand? Something is happening to you. And you may not know it yet, but you're going to know it. Don't run away, babe. I'm going to turn you loose here in a moment to pray for them all. No, you can go sit down, but don't run out the building and go, go to Madagascar to turn it over. I'm going, to, I'm going to call on you to lay hands on the people here in a moment. I'm going to roll off of everything she just, I mean, just close your eyes for a moment. I want to minister along the lines of the anointing. As I spoke about last night, that is the, the most priceless gift. I always tell people, think of the blood of Jesus as the key to unlock the door. And behind the door is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. For if it wasn't for the perfect sacrifice, you could never be a temple that could house the holy things of God. But because... He willingly gave his life. Something that would have destroyed your flesh. Because it's too powerful to be contained. Has been released upon you. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And even times when you don't even realize what's happening. He's happening in you and he's happening through you. Tonight is going to be a night of an absolute consecration. Tonight is going to be a night of the oil of heaven upon your head. Some of you will literally feel it. It's like a hot oil that hits your head. Runs straight down. And you can't talk about the Lord without one word. Holy. It's holy what he does. Because it is not about you. It is about him. And it is about what he's going to do through you. And I was hitting this last night and I'm going to roll into this. But, you know, the key to walking in the anointing is obedience. Abraham was a man that was, was empowered by God supernaturally. That was the anointing that flowed in him in measure. You can have it in greater measure according to Scripture because you have a better covenant than Abraham had. You can get closer to God than Abraham could get. Abraham would have to stand at a distance and see him walk up, but you can have him live on the inside of you. But Abraham was a man that obeyed God. That's what it comes down to. It's not I get to do what I want to do and God's going to do everything I ask him to do. It's I consecrate my life to do what he tells me to do. I'll obey you, God. It says the Lord said to Abram in Genesis 12, leave your native country, your relatives, your father's family, and go to the land that I'll show you. 
And there I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. And I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. And all the families on earth will be blessed because of you or through you. And so it says, so Abram departed as the Lord had instructed. That's obedience. He obeyed the word of the Lord. Some of you, maybe you are in school and you obeyed the word of the Lord. Not everybody in here is in school, but you've been obeying the word of the Lord. Some of you left fan, family, friends, relatives just to come. To follow after the call of God. To follow after the unction of the Lord. And it's not always about ministry. God doesn't just call you into ministry. God calls you into your calling. And it's obedience. You want the anointing to flow like my wife said. You have to obey the word of the Lord. And whatever he tells you to do, even if it's going to make you look like an idiot, you just say, Lord, at least I get to look like an idiot for you. <laughs> it's my second week in the ministry. After I waited, my wife called me that day. It was supernatural when the Lord laid her out. I was literally at a luncheon telling a, best, a friend of mine, I've missed the timing of the Lord, and I won't be able to fulfill the call of God on my life. I was eating fajitas. <laughs> and that was my only comfort. <laughs> and my phone rang. The man looks at me, my friend, and he says, you don't understand the grace of God, Caleb. The grace of God is that when you and your wife are ready, it is the perfect timing of the Lord. I said, no, I missed his timing. He said, no, the grace of God is that when you, he gets you ready, that's the perfect time. And my phone rings right then. And my wife is on the phone and she's crying and I think something bad happened. She's hysterical. I'm like, are the kids okay? What's happening? She says, we have to go. We have to go. It's not about us. It's about the people that he wants us to reach. It's not about you. You think you sit here and you're like, Lord, how many more nights do I have to sit here? You got to sit here as long as it takes to shake a nation or whatever it else is God wants to do in you. And Ankit nailed it. That's the thing even with prosperity. People that are anti-prosperity are selfish people. Because they only think of themselves, and so they don't think anybody needs more. But if you start thinking of other people, then you like, I need more. I need a limitless flow because everywhere I look, there's people I want to bless. There's people I want to do. There's crusades I want to fund. There's a city I want to shake. There's a, there's a church I want to build. There's a pastor I want to back. There's another family I want to help. There's a little kid that's in the anointing that says they believe in God for something, and you want to just give it to them. So say, look, you believe God. It's about that. Whew, Jesus. I'm not even going to walk around because I don't know that I would stand up. That's my second week in the ministry, and I, I'm driving to church, and the Lord says, tonight you're going to preach on joy. I said, yeah, I mean, Okay. So I'm thinking, you know, the new wine, the Holy Ghost, Joel, Acts 2, what do I preach? I walk into the church building, and the entire lobby is filled with people welling and crying, holding one another in depression because someone close to them just went into a coma and is not expected to get out of it. And I quickly said to the Lord, now's not a good night to talk about joy. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you want to go in, like, everybody's laughing in the lobby, and you're like, this is the night to talk about joy. Look, everybody's happy. We're going to bring it on. We're going to slide right in. And the Lord's like, no, this is the night. And I argued. Oh, I mean, I argued. Like, God, this is not the night for joy. Pick any other night. This is a bad idea. I'm just telling you, God, because you're way up there and you're, you're out of touch with people's feelings. But this is a bad atmosphere for that. You're welcome. I'll keep you in touch. I'll let you know how it goes. And it won't lift, it won't lift, it won't lift. And so I get up and I say, tonight. 
We're going to talk about the joy of the Lord. The woman whose fiance is in a coma is standing in the back of the building with six friends still crying. And a guy, six foot five African American guy, was pissed at me for talking about joy because it seemed insensitive. So he crossed his arms and he glared at me the entire time I preached. <laughs> it was the shortest message I've ever preached. I mean, like 20 minutes, and then I'm like, babe, babe, get the car ready. Things are going south. I listened to the Lord, and look what that got me. I'm going to be murdered. Sorry, let me sanctify it. Martyred. I mean, I was in Bible school graduating when Rodney, uh, Reinhard Bonnke stops the pulp, in the pulpit and says, I've never said this publicly. But I'm in the presence of the latter-day martyrs. Some of you will die for the gospel. And you know, like, when that's your commencement speech, you don't know whether to, like, like yay or... Yeah, I mean, literally mixed feelings right away. You could feel the tension in the room as people were looking around like, maybe you? You could take that one, Lord. I don't really like them anyways. They irritate me. If we're, if we're volunteering names. You're like 21 years old questioning, like, do I love the Lord that much? I mean, Lord, I love you, but I'd like to get married. If it's possible. P.S. Nevertheless, your will be done and not mine. So I, I walked up to the to the to, to the to the six foot five guy. I said, because yeah. I said, who needs the joy of the Lord? And honestly, there was like seven kids right in the front row, and I was hoping a kid would raise their hand. Like, I actually was looking at him. Who needs the joy? And this six foot five guy raises his hand in the back, and he was the only one that responded. I was like, I mean, I don't think you're supposed to say crap in church, but I. Crap. And he was at the back of the church, so you had to awkwardly walk the whole way to the back of the church because he wasn't coming forward. I was like, get up here. No. All right, I'll come to you in the dark, shady corner of the church <laughs> where I will be martyred. <laughs> and I laid my hands on his belly, and I don't even know what to pray. <laughs> you laugh, but like, there's some things you'll encounter that you're like, Man, he just started laughing. <laughs> laughing. I mean, bubbling up, laughing, laughing, laughing. Now I'm like, I'm not going to die. <laughs> and I start laughing because I'm like relieved. And he falls over. Then all the kids start laughing. And I was like, where were you 20 minutes ago? You bunch of tag-alongs. You need to be leaders in life. It's ridiculous. I gave you an opportunity. I don't even know if it's real joy. Looks like a bunch of copycats to me. 
And then I hear the Lord say, go to the woman whose husband, whose fiance is in a, in a coma. And you're like, let's not push it, God, you know. <laughs> like for one, it's culturally insensitive. You know what I'm saying? It is. That's not kind. And that's a fruit of the spirit. So uh, this is not the spirit of the Lord. I rebuke you, Satan. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I went to her and I laid hands on her and the joy of the Lord hit her. She started laughing and then all of her posse that were crying started laughing. And the whole church started laughing and I still got out of there quickly. <laughs> in case it turned in a moment, you know. <laughs> Babe, get the bag, let's go. The next day we came in for soul winning and there was the woman whose husband, whose fiance was in a coma, beaming with joy and delight. The Lord had totally ministered to her, broken off of the heaviness. See, because the anointing flows from him. You don't own it. You don't possess it. You have to yield to it. You have to obey him. When he says to do something, if you want the anointing in your life, you don't get to just go around and be like, I'm turning it on. It'd be great. I've had those conversations with the Lord. Like, if you could just anoint me so that I could, like, point my finger and shoot, you know, shout the people that really need it. But you can't. It's his. It's precious. I one time asked the Lord, why do you not? You know, the healing anointing is real. You can be healed scripturally by faith. So that's why we teach faith. Because by my faith, I can tap into the word of God and I can receive healing in my body. That's by faith. Every principle, every promise in scripture is yours by faith. Amen? But the healing anointing is different. That when the Lord decides that my anointing for healing will flow, it doesn't matter if you're sitting there with your arms crossed saying, I will not be healed. His anointing will heal you. Because he is a healer. And it is as the Lord wills. So I asked the Lord one time, why don't you just let your anointing flow, un you know, never, un you know, just everybody gets healed. And the Lord, he didn't even like wait two seconds. It was the quickest answer I've ever heard. He said, because they would kill him. He said, if I put my anointing on a person that degree where every person got healed, they would be dead within two weeks. When you think about it, they killed Jesus, who had the spirit without measure. They murdered him. They chose a murderer to be released over Jesus because of the anointing. So you got to understand to carry the anointing, there is a cost involved. Abraham carried the anointing because he obeyed the word of the Lord. But then the anointing in your life will produce. It will produce crazy things. The anointing will take you from the field to the palace, from the pit to the palace, from a fisherman's boat to the top high priest of the land, from a shipwreck all the way to the highest place on the island. The anointing will catapult you. But with that then comes another test because there's always another level with God. And God is always testing the hearts. So he tested Abraham and God will test you. Let me ask you something. People say, and I started it with this. You can ask, you can ask anything in prayer and if you believe it, you can receive it. The Bible says it. The word of God is not man-made. This is God's word. I can ask anything from God, and if I believe it, I can receive it. Amen. How many people ask God for something tonight? Wave your hand. You ask God for something. If you believe it, you can receive it. Well, let me challenge you with this. What if God's response is, I'm going to do it, but I want to ask something from you? What if it costs you something? What if there's, not that there's a price tag, but there's a test tag attached to what you're asking God for? Say, Lord, I ask you for the nations. And the Lord says, well, first go reach your neighbor. No, I don't like my neighbor. <laughs> there, you know, you've seen them, God. They have a Biden sticker on their car. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not preaching to them. Some people are beyond repentance. 
not to bring politics in. I'm trying to be funny. Hopefully, any Biden supporters, we, we, you know, we. I don't, I don't really know what I'm, I don't really know what I'm going with that. Be not foolish, but be wise and understand the will of the Lord. Amen. I heard the other day Biden asked if he, voted, if he actually voted for himself because he couldn't remember. And that was terrible. That was terrible. And thank you for the courtesy laugh. So the Lord tested Abraham. And the Lord will test you sometimes. Sometimes he'll test to go to another level with God. It might cost you something. Are you willing to pay the price? It's between you and the Lord. What if God asked something from you? For Naaman, the prophet asked him to dip seven times. And that hurt his pride. Sometimes we can get lofted up in ourselves, especially when the Lord's breathing upon our lives. Then you get confident and you get self-confident and not God-confident. And then the Lord will call you to do something that will make you look like a fool. Because he's going to humble you. Because he says, I resist the proud, but I give grace to the humble. So sometimes the anointing will produce something in your life, and then that's the very thing God asked to give. Will you give the thing that I gave you back to me? I've heard it. You've heard it. Sometimes it's houses. Sometimes it's cars. Sometimes it's churches. Sometimes it's ministries. Sometimes it's just, will you look a fool for me? Will you get back to the good things that start at your ministry. People get sophisticated as ministers. They start it crying, snot coming out of their nose, rolling on the ground, the power of God, and then they get sophisticated and the crowds get big and everything's got to be dignified. Sometimes God asks for your dignity. Let me strip it away. Will you become like David and dance before the crowd? Will you remember the Lord thy God that gave it to you? Will you allow people to mock you and still stand for me. Come on. That's the anointing. Can God ask something from you? God asked something from the rich young ruler. The Bible says the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, I obey your word. I don't do these things. What is it that you ask of me? And Jesus said simply, go and give all of your possessions away and then you can follow me. And you know, he wouldn't give it up. He wouldn't pay the price tag. He couldn't give up the things of this world. Sometimes the Lord will ask things of this world. Sometimes it'll be comfort. You look at Pastor Eric and Jennifer that have been such a blessing to my father-in-law, and I thank the Lord for them all the time. Absolutely. 100%. Generals in the body of Christ, too. And the Lord asked a heavy thing from them. Millions of dollars that they gave up washed their hands of it to follow the call of God and they didn't even care and you never heard them grumble and you never heard them complain. Because sometimes there is a price tag attached to it. And especially if you want to go to another level. Sometimes that's the very thing. You're like, God, get, take me to some, I, I see more, I feel more. Well, to go where you've never gone, you've got to do what you've never done. Come on. Sometimes you got to obey the word of the Lord. I'm speaking even by myself. There's something that the Lord had really put on my heart, and I kept putting off, kept putting it off. And now I'm like, feel the unction. I have to do it. And it's like, am I even really ready for it? Is it the right time? Doesn't even seem like the right time. Can I get a few more years? But I'm like, no, I have to obey the word of the Lord. And if it costs me everything, if the ministry explodes, if we go, oh, who cares? It's not mine. It's the Lord's. Are you with me right now? When I first started traveling, the Lord started teaching me, said, watch my people, watch pastors. And he said, they will make a decision in faith to go after more, or they will make a decision in fear to protect what they've got. And I had gotten to a place recently where I was making decisions based on fear to protect what I've got, instead of faith to believe for more. There's things that burn in your heart. Do you think that those things were put there by you? No, those were desires that God put into your heart. But to get there, there's tests. There's things you go through. The anointing is the pure river of God that sanctifies and empowers you. And it makes creation line up 
at your becking call. The anointing will make a tree collapse if the tree doesn't produce. The anointing will make a mountain move out of your way. The anointing will make every airline delay its flight so that you catch the flight if you're 20 minutes late. Come on. We had to get passports to go to a nation one time, and we had like 30 minutes to do it here in Tampa. And you know, when you go into Tampa, there's like the number, you know, pick your number, and it's like there's 800 depressed people in the room. Everybody looks suicidal. It's like, it's literally like Zootopia. You saw Zootopia? So we, we had no time, and we said, Father, I just thank you for favors. We go in there. You will cost us to go in our favor. We walk in there. Place is packed. I draw my number from the wall. It's like number 201, now serving number 63. It was looking good. We go and we sit down, and Taylor's right here on the front row. She sat down beside me in, this, in, the, in the DMV or the whatever, this passport control. She looks down, and there's a piece of paper on the ground. She takes the piece of paper and flips it over, and it says 64, and it goes, ding, now serving 64. We stood up, and you could feel the heat of every eye. On our backs as we walked forward. We had literally been in there 20 seconds. And the guy, the, D, the, the passport guy, saw it all happen. He thought it was the funniest thing ever. It made his day. He waived every fee. He's like, I'm going to expedite this because something's on you guys. Check. Don't even worry about paying for it. That made my day. The anointing will make crazy things happen for you. Come on, the anointing will accelerate things in your life. The anointing will cost what would take 40 years to happen in 40 days. The anointing will cost you to run over a troop and leap over a wall. The anointing will cost you to outrun a chariot. Come on, somebody. The anointing will expedite everything that you are believing God for, what man can't do in a hundred years, an anointed man or woman can do in a week if they would just follow the voice of the Lord and let that anointing flow through them. Come on, somebody. The anointing is real. I got to thinking about that. Why do the critics always take the anointed things? Because that's the thing that graded their spirit. Everything, and they recognize, I don't like that. Because that was the word of the Lord that came forth with power behind it. And every devil of hell hates the power that the church contains. And they want to eradicate it, but bless God, they don't have the power in all of their numbers and all of their masses and all of their bank accounts to shut down the church of Jesus Christ. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. Are you the church? Are you the church? Oh, then stand to your feet and let the victory on the inside of you rush out of you right now. You are victorious. And every devil of hell knows it. Every enemy of man knows it. That's why they try to shut down the church. That's why they try to mock you. That's why they try to break you. That's why they try to ridicule you. But you can laugh. You can scoff. But I'll dance before the Lord in my underwear if that's what he asked me to do. I will get me even more undignified than this. You ain't seen the half yet. You're one of those tongue talkers. I'll pray in tongues, and you can quote everything you want to quote, but I'm going to be a tongue-talking, devil-stomping, Bible-toting, Holy Ghost believer all the days of my life because you're too late, and I've gone too deep, and I know too much, and I've felt too many great things. I've had times that I knew I was emptied out of myself, when I sat there like a spectator watching God do something through me. I've had times that I was like a glove. I wasn't even in control. It was the Holy Spirit that was so in control of me. And I sat there and you come out of it. And people say, you remember that word you spoke over me? I don't remember any of it. It wasn't me. It was the Holy Ghost on the inside of me. And if it came from me at that time, you better listen to it because it's not the word of man. It's the word of the Holy Ghost. And he is not a man that he should lie. And God wants to do that in every single one of you. And it's the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. 
Say, man, I just can't get past this hurdle. Jesus said, when he said, you can ask anything in prayer and believing you receive it. Right before that, he was speaking about, you can say unto this mountain. Get out of my life. Come on, somebody. Maybe there's something that's been blocking what you want to see done by in your spirit right now. Take 10 seconds and rebuke that thing right now. Come on. Rebuke it like you got authority. There's a voice that has rebuke in it. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you're dog and you're like, hey, Fido, Fido, Fido. And then there's another voice that's like, Fido, get here right now. He might have peed a little bit, but he's there now. That's the voice that's got to come from your spirit, a voice of authority. And it's in every blood-bought, born-again, spirit-filled believer. There is a voice of authority on the inside of you, and that authority has nothing to do with your age. It has to do with the spirit of God that's on the inside of you that wants to gush forth from your spirit, man, and declare something. It's the anointing of the Lord. That breaks the things that come against you. My God, my God. The anointing destroys the yoke. I'm not watching for the Greek or all of that stuff, but I do love when they explain that. Because the word is obliterated into dust beyond the ability to glue back together or repair in any way or make it look like it once did. The anointing destroys the yokes of bondage. And man, when the anointing destroys those yokes off of you, it destroys it off of your children, destroys it off of your grandchildren. Oh, God said, yeah, the curse may try and stick for three generations to four, but bless God, the blessings are to a thousand generations. Oh, what God has been doing in you, the half has never yet been told. And even the greatest things that you're going to see, those of you that have produced offspring that you've raised up in the things of God, I'm going to take a moment and prophesy over you. The greatest things that you have ever seen and will ever see this side of eternity, your children will go ten times further than you because you have placed within them a firm foundation and a righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. It may not look that way right now, but the word does not fail and the blood is upon the doorpost. And I thank you, Lord. My grandchildren, if you tarry, will be the most Holy Ghost tornado preachers. Oh, I see churches. I see ministries. I see breakthrough Bible colleges. Whatever you do in me, Lord, put a multiplication upon the next generations. And that goes beyond just blood children. It goes to spiritual children that the Lord is going to cost you to raise up. Because let me tell you something. Though the devil has a plan that has went for hundreds of years, God's plan is still greater than the devil's plan. And God's plan is every generation is going to get further and greater and greater and greater until the final trumpet sound. It's not going to decline. It's going to increase. Even right now, things are increasing in the inside of you. Oh, some of you walked into this place, and the greatest faith you could muster to say something has just been obliterated, and it's going to be replaced by times 10. Grant Cardone ain't got nothing on the Holy Ghost and fire. I'll 10x you, I'll 100x you, I'll 1,000x you, because the Holy Ghost has no limits and no boundaries. Whew. And I'm talking about the test. I'm going to hit you with this. Some of you in this room right now have walked through things that I've walked through. I've walked through the suicide of a dear person so close to me, they were like a second mom to me. You felt the pain. You felt the hurt. You've walked through junk, divorces. You've walked through horrible things, the death of someone close to you. And you make up a decision right now. Is that going to be for nothing? 
You're going to let the devil hurt you and laugh about it? Or are you going to take that and say, oh, you messed with the wrong person? I might have been a Baptist boy in a choir, but you came and you took something from me that was precious, and I'm not going to stop taking things away from you. You will know my name and the name of Jesus all the way down to the gates of hell. Just as Paul's name was known in hell, so shall my name be known. You mess with the wrong man and the wrong woman. You touch something that I don't want you to touch, and you think you got away with it. The devil thought he got away with it with Jesus. He laughed about it, but my Bible tells me another story. You thought you got away with it, but my Savior made a public spectacle of you, triumphing over you, and forevermore I will triumph over you because the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of me. Oh, Oh, I'm more than flesh and blood. I am a spirit being. My spirit is one with God's spirit. And what he says, I'll obey. And when I obey God, there's nothing you or any army or any European Union or any world organization or any flu or anything can do to stop the word of the Lord. It'll multiply and multiply and multiply. Whew. And the last thing I want to hit, I tried to hit this last night, but I didn't get, get quite there. From the test, when Abraham was leaving the earth, and he knew the anointing, the presence, has to go to the next generation. He looked at his servant and he said, I need you to go and I need you to find a wife. Because he knew I can't choose the person. I told you this last night, but I'm going to reiterate it. The anointing is not yours. You don't own it. A preacher could lay hands on a thousand people, but they don't get to determine who of those thousand people are going to receive it. All they can do is be a vessel that God will pour through. My job is to obey the Lord and yield to him. But who it transfers on to, that's the ones that are like the Rebecca's. She didn't just water the servant. She wasn't even asked to water the servant. You got people saying, Lord, I want, to, I want the anointing. Lord, I want public ministry. Lord, I want the big things of God. Lord, I want to be a mega church pastor. But you can't even do anything not asked of you. The pastors don't say, vacuum the floor. You'll walk past the floor and leave it trashy. The anointing comes. It transfers on those that go beyond. There are those that will do the minimal things for God, but there are those that they just can't turn off the passion. Lord, I'm going to go over and above. I'm going to volunteer for everything. You're going to have to anoint me because I'm going to run my flesh straight into the ground. Oh, you're going to have to resurrect a dead man because I will pour out every bit of life that I've got just to lift your name higher. And I don't care if anybody sees me do it. I don't care if anybody recognizes me doing it. I'm not doing it for the applause of men. I do everything as unto the Lord. I don't do it to serve the man of God. I do it to serve the Lord God Almighty. He is my rock. He is my fortress. He is my God, my everything, my all in all, my prize, my my goal, my heart's desire is the Lord. And if I ever get acknowledged by a great minister, that's great. But let him be acknowledging me because of my yielding to him. Rebecca was found because the servant said, Lord God, my servant Abraham has served you all of his days. I'm going to stand at this well. I'm not going to say anything. But when you send a woman here that will say of her own free will, I will give you water and I will water the camels as well, then I will know that that is the woman because that is a person of honor and that is a person that the anointing will transfer upon. You want the key to walk in the greater? Start doing more than you are right now. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. Everybody likes step two. But he hates step three. <laughs> More 
Pastor Caleb, I don't actually know what day it is right now. <laughs> more. Pastor Caleb, I have not had more than $10 in my account since I came to Bible school. Because the moment I get paid, Brother Onkit gets up to take up the offering. And I'm like, Lord, I'll give it all to you. I haven't eaten in 21 days, not because I planned it, but because it's a forced fast when I have no money. More? What more can I give? Well, to those of you that have done that much, do you think that God has not seen what you are doing? Do you think that it is not gone up as a memorial before the heavenly father, the one that you're doing all things for? Do you think that God doesn't sometimes orchestrate an entire evening just for one person in the crowd? Do you think that God doesn't love you so much that he'll direct 16 preachers in a row to minister the exact same thing that you need deposited on the inside of you? And though there's 500 people there, it's really for one person because God will move everything for one person whose heart is fully fixed upon him. My question for you tonight is, is your heart fully fixed on the Lord? If it is, then get ready, 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 get ready. Because what you've seen and you've felt up till now is nothing compared to what the Lord is about to release even in this year. 2024 let's say it's the year of more let's say it's the year of open doors let's say it's the year of breakthrough in all areas let's say it's the greatest year of your life to date because the Lord gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter as I promised every person that has faith to receive from the anointing tonight Every person that goes over and above. Every person that's fed a few camels around here. And man, do they eat, and man, do they drink. And they do other things too, but we won't talk about that. But I took care of that too as well, Pastor Caleb. I grew up on a dairy farm. I know all about that. I'm closing with this, and then I'm going to pray for people. Everybody out there, too, I'm going to pray the anointing touches those of you out there. I know you long to be here. We've got messages all the way from Nairobi, the supernatural anointing, touching people. You're all over the world, and this is your life force. And we take it a deep honor that you tune in, and we always pray. Everybody here, I can testify to the, the, the integrity of this ministry. Our, their hearts are always locked in on reaching people with the true anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's why you tune in night after night. Because God is flowing freely over the airways because we do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And we do not quench the Holy Spirit here. It's not our meetings and it's not our ministry. It's His. And that's why the Lord is blessing you. And I pray right now the anointing comes upon you. Rebecca was a woman of honor. Rebecca sought to serve the anointing. She offered whatever she had and beyond. I will give you this water and I will go back and I will refill it as many times as it takes to take care of your camels. And after she watered the camels, she said, you can also come home with me and I will give you a place to stay and I will feed the camels at the house and I will feed you too. So the man, Abraham's servant, followed Rachel home, or Rebecca home. And there he met Laban. And the Bible goes into detail to say that Laban noticed the gold on Rebecca's nose and the gold on Rebecca's bracelet and then he snapped into charge trying to get whatever he could from the anointing the difference between Laban and Rebecca you know the story of Laban is then spoken about just the next few chapters he never escaped always trying to profit himself from the anointing what can I get what can I get what can I get and the question isn't what can I get it's Lord what can I give I tell preachers this, when I started in the ministry, I'd watch things and I realized quickly, especially now that I'm a pastor, you can definitely experience it. There will be many traveling ministers that come through there that don't give a rip about your church. They don't care about the people of God. They care about their next big project. That is their entire focus, is they're building their ministry and what they want to do. And I purposed in my heart early in the ministry, I said, God, everywhere I go, 
Let me leave more than I take from that place. Let me make a deposit everywhere I go. That's my heart's desire. Let me leave the people with more than I found the people. And I can only do that with your help. So Holy Spirit, I don't want to go anywhere that you won't go with me. And I don't want to stand in any pulpit that you don't ordain for me to stand in. And I certainly don't want a microphone thrust in my hands unless you're going to be there with me. Because you are the one that pours it out. Every head bowed and every eye closed in this place right now. Those watching online and all the broadcast, television. I want you to search your heart. If you were to die today, do you know for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that you would go to heaven? Every man will one day stand before the Lord. It is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. You don't know when that day will be. I was preaching in Texas several years back and on Sunday morning there was a man that dropped to his knees and raised his hands and cried out, holy, holy, just worshiping the Lord. On his way to the church that night, young teenagers ran a red light, T-boned him and his life was cut short at 45 years old. But I can testify that the man was on fire, and the man loved the Lord, so I know where he wound up. The question is, where will you wind up? No one can get to the Father except through the Son. And in order to be born again, it takes a surrender of your heart and a repentance of your heart, saying, Lord, I repent for everything that I have done wrong, everything hidden, every wicked agenda. I lay it down before you, and I'm asking you, Lord, to be a light to shine in me to wash me and cleanse me and set me free. Jesus, I want to give you my life. I want the assurance. I want you to live on the inside of me. I have done it my way. And from now on, I want to do it your way. I want to turn my back on wickedness. I want to turn my back on addiction. I want to turn my back on compromise. 18 generations sipped on grandpa's old cough medicine, but you'd want to draw a line in the sand and say, I want this broken off of my household. I don't want to keep going down this path. Lord, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the price tag that sin takes. Sin will take you further than you want to go and cost you more than you're prepared to give. The question is, will you do what it takes to get rid of it? You can't break it on your own. You can only break it by surrender to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Tonight, in just a few moments, I'm going to give a call. And if there is anything in you that you want the Lord to break off of you, then you're going to run to this altar, and the Lord is going to meet you in this place. You're not going to give a rip about what people think. You're not going to care about what night it is. You're not going to care what song is sung, and you're not going to care what preacher is standing there. You're not coming forward to a preacher, to an ambiance, or to an orchestra. You're coming forward to a King of kings and Lord of lords that said, My arms are stretched wide. You're tired. You're weary. You're beaten down but tonight I will give you rest tonight I will take that yoke off of you and I will put on a new yoke that is easy and a burden that is light you will not carry it when you leave this place secondly maybe you're here and like I said you've gone through those trials but to tell you the truth you don't feel like you came through them victorious divorce rocked you bankruptcy slammed you Someone close to you passed away and died unexpectedly. They were even serving the Lord, and it rocked your world, and it rocked your faith. And ever since then, you've not been all in with God. You don't know what to do, and you're sliding, and you can feel that sliding. We all know what we're talking about, that sliding, that feeling of just drifting and drifting and drifting like a ship that's come untethered in the harbor and the storm is coming and it's drawing you out to sea and it terrifies you because you don't want to drift but you feel that drift i tell you tonight if you would make a decision by faith to say i might not feel it but i'm coming back to my first love you will anchor me i will not drift and i will not fall away i'm rushing back to you god if you do that tonight god will meet you with his arms he will wrap his arms around you and he will not let you break that grasp he will hold you in the palm of his hand where no man can pluck you out so that on that day when you cross over not one of us will be missing if that's you 
With every head bowed and every eye closed, raise your hand right now across this place. Those of you watching on television, even though no one's in the room with you, or maybe your grandmother's sitting beside you, and you feel embarrassed to lift your hand, forget that embarrassment. Lift your hand right now and say, God, I am not ashamed to pledge my life to you. I am not ashamed to admit you and to confess you before men, because your word declares if I confess you before men, you will confess me between, before your, my Father in heaven. As your hands are raised, you're going to stand up and you're going to come forward right now and I'm going to pray with you. And then we're going to move swiftly into praying for people. About the only way I can see this happening is me walking down the aisles with my wife. My wife at seven years old had an encounter with the Lord so intense. I think she was seven, maybe it was 12. That in an entire sanctuary of a thousand plus people, She looked up and she knew every single person, every single thought, every single compromise. And she was not prideful. It was the love of God because God sees everything. And she walked through there laying hands on everybody just led by the Holy Ghost. And I've told her many, many times that that anointing is coming back on your life in a great way. And I feel like tonight might even be that night. I'm going to another level. I'm stepping up for Jesus. And everybody in here that has that heart's desire. And I'm not talking about ministry alone. I'm talking about living for my Savior. Everybody that is standing up here right now, you're not standing here because I preached the greatest message of my life. I spat on the front row like seven times. If there was any blind person, now they can see 2015. (laughs) Shababa. You're standing up here because the Lord tugged at your heart. And you said yes to that tug. And that's all it takes to keep that surrender in your heart. The surrender to Him. What if someone comes and makes fun of you? What if someone mocks you? What if someone calls you a Jesus freak or a Christian or a weak person? Oh, you're one of those weirdos. you got to trust the science, man. Tonight, I pray that you would tether yourself so close to Christ that no person could get between you and him ever again. As your hands are raised up, we're going to pray a prayer. And as we complete this prayer, the anointing of the Lord is going to come upon you. Some of you will be like it sweeps your feet out from underneath you. May the Lord make you lie down in green pastures and may he anointed any of the ushers in here to flow with the Holy Ghost. But don't do anything stupid. If your hands are raised. Say this with me. Say, Father, tonight I freely give myself to you. Lord, I confess you're my Lord. You're my Savior. I repent of sin. I repent of doubt. And I repent of compromise Jesus from tonight forward I commit I will want what you want I will be what you want me to be I'm asking you Lord take my life and make it the life that you want it to be I thank you Lord for your grace for your mercy and for your anointing. Tonight I ask you, Lord, for a pure anointing upon my flesh. Anoint me to live right, to speak right, to think right. May the anointing on my life be the anchor that holds me to you. And may I never drift all of my days May I never drift from your presence. I give you today, I give you tomorrow, and I give you the remainder of my days. For all eternity, I am yours, and you are mine. And Holy Spirit, I thank you for the fire of the heaven to seal this in my heart right now. Take it beyond feelings. Take it beyond emotions. Sear it on my heart. And may it never lose 
It's power. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now just begin to thank the Lord right now. Holy Spirit, I think your fire touches them. It anoints them. It sears it on their heart. It takes them past any types of feelings. It takes them into the deeper things of God. I'm going to start laying hands on people. I don't have time to spend a lot of time with you. Worship team, I want you to flow with the oldies and the greats. Let your fire fall. Sweet anointing flood this place. Just flow and don't stop. May the anointing, I pray, be upon the worship team to go deeper than they've ever gone and tap into something greater than they've ever tapped into before. Ushers, you're going to follow. I'm going to turn my wife loose wherever she is. Antonio, huh? They got people outside? All right, you're going to follow the ushers outside. The front row can stay. You want to take a microphone and tell everybody what to do? I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to the broadcast. Take a moment and pray over each and every one of you as we get ready here. Father, I just thank you. And babe, boy, you got a microphone? Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon everybody out there. I pray you pick up the phone right now if you want to touch from God and you call and may the same fire and anointing that floods every person in this place come swiftly upon you right now. May it follow the Holy Ghost and pray over them before we say goodbye. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that people that are tuned in around America and around the world, Lord, I thank you, Father, for your anointing to flow right into their living rooms, their bedrooms, wherever they are, Lord, their workplace. I thank you, Father, that the oil is being poured on them and it's going to flow on them and they will never be the same. In Jesus' mighty name. So, so. Thank you, Jesus. If you felt Amen. something, pick up the phone and call the call center right now. They're going to be there to pray with you and for you for any need that you might have. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you. We bless you. Amen. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow night. Evangelist Onkit's going to finish out the week, and I know that there's a powerful word he's going to release that will do greatly bless you. I love you. Jesus loves you even more. It's been an honor. May you be blessed. shall tremble and quake. I saw it in the spirit, the shouts that will be heard around the world because there's coming another shout. The trump of God. The voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. I believe what we are about to see in the next three years will eclipse everything that we've ever seen. Everything in the kingdom of God is about to be escalated and the power of God is going to flow forth from the church. It shall be shouted from the mountaintops until the whole of America knows that Jesus is alive, that he is real, that he is coming soon. The shout! The shout that will be heard around the world. The shout that will come in your nation. Get ready!